around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. More coffee, Marshal? Uh, yes, ma'am, I guess so. How about, how about you, Chester? Yes, sir, I believe I will. Well, why don't you just leave the coffee pot right here on the table, Miss Kelly? Sure thing, Marshal. I got some fresh eggs this morning, if you're interested. They were just brought in. Fresh eggs? Oh, good. Why don't you cook us up about a half a dozen, huh? Have them for you right away. All right. Fresh eggs. Well, I swear if Delmonico's ain't getting be about as fancy as some of them Kansas City restaurants. Ah, civilization, Chester. Progress. You know, another five years and Dodge City will be tamed, curried, and bridled. Well, mm-hmm. uh, seeing's believing, Mr. Delmonico. Well, you'll see it. We'll both see it. As so if we live that long. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Uh, yeah. You the marshal here? That's right. Well, I'm sorry to bother you at your breakfast, marshal. My name is Hunter, Ed Hunter. I'm a deputy sheriff from Richmond, Virginia. Came in on the train this morning. I see. Won't you pull up a chair, Mr. Hunter? Oh, thank you, sir. This is my first trip to the frontier. I find it a rather remarkable experience. <laughs> I imagine. Oh, that's my assistant, Chester Proudfoot. How are you, sir? How you? Would you like to have some coffee? Thank you. No, no. Uh, Marshal, uh, I've come out here to arrest two men who are wanted in Virginia. Uh, here are the warrants and the uh, orders of extradition. Uh-huh. I stopped off in Topeka for them. And John Allison... Calvin Moore. Yeah, both wanted for murder, huh? Uh, do you know these men, Mr. Hunter? No, sir, I don't. Yeah, the names aren't familiar to me. I never heard of them. Well, I have some information that might help. Not much on Allison, I'm afraid. He shot and killed a bank teller in Greenbrier last spring. He's about 30 years old, dark hair and mustache, medium build, excellent horseman, confirmed gambler. Fine. That narrows it down to about two-thirds of the men in Dodge <laughs> City. Uh, possibly I'd do a bit better in regard to the other man, Calvin Moore. He came down to Richmond from the north. He was about 33 at the time. He ambushed and shot young Roger Beauregard and left town. Now, that was 19 years ago. Beauregard family been trying to trace him ever since. Well, I'm afraid that I haven't... Now, I have a picture of this Moore photograph. Oh? Yeah. Of course, he's much younger than this. What is it, Marshal? Something familiar about the picture? Nineteen years. Hmm. He'd be somewhere past fifty now. Uh, you sure these men are here in Dodge, Mr. Hunter? Reasonably so. Uh, is there something about the photograph? Why, well, it was too blurred to tell much about it. And besides, he'd be nineteen years older now. Well, that's true. Uh, I'll tell you what, Mr. Hunter. Why don't you leave me this picture and the descriptions, and, uh, and I'll check around town and keep in touch with you. All right. Thank you, sir. And I wonder, could you suggest a good hotel? Yeah, why don't you try the Dodge House? It's a corner of Railroad Avenue at the east end of the plaza. You tell Mr. Doby I sent you. Thank you again, Marshal. I'm grateful for any help you can give me in this matter. Sure. So long. You want to see the photograph, Chester? Uh, yes, sir. Uh... Oh, Mr. Dillon, that... That's... Yeah. What are you going to do? I don't know, Chester. He's my friend. But now the law says he's a murderer. And I'm part of the law. Well, maybe it ain't him, Mr. Dillon. No, it's him, all right, Chester. You saw it the same as I did. It's Doc. <laughs> Work, work, work. 
quick work. Yeah, this is the first chance I've had this week to clean a few instruments properly. Uh, gunshot wounds. Mad, I'd lay odds I'm the only doctor in the United States who makes three-fourths of his living off a gunshot wound. That's a rough country, Doc. Maybe, uh... You ought to have stayed back east, huh? Broken bones and babies and gunshot wounds. I wouldn't know the first thing about a good civilized case of gout anymore. What part of the east did you come from, Doc? I went to medical school in Boston. I studied consumption and colic, liver complaints... Never had a case of liver complaint in all the time I've been out here. No, I, I guess that kind of thing is more common down south, around uh, Richmond, Virginia, for instance. Huh? Matt, stop beating around the bush. You've got something on your mind, and it's bothering you. All right, Doc. A deputy sheriff from Virginia came in on the morning train. He's got a warrant for murder against a man named Calvin Moore. And a photograph of Moore taken 19 years ago. Would you like to take a look at it? I don't think so, Matt. Are you Calvin Moore? It wasn't murder, Matt. They said it was murder, of course. Would you like to tell me about it? Not much to tell, man. I'd been in practice in Richmond about a year. There was a girl. Oh, she was a beautiful girl with spirit and fire and that soft radiance that only southern girls seem to have. Oh, me, it was so long ago. Yeah, I've been out of the south myself, Doc. Well, Jim Beauregard and I were both courting this girl. He was a typical Virginia gentleman, hot-headed, used to having his own way. He started threatening me, warning me, and I laughed it off. Well, then one day I was coming back from a case, and I ran into Jim on a country road. He had a pair of dueling pistols, and he challenged me. Well, that's not a crime, Doc. Self-defense is not a crime here, anyway. I tried to talk him out of it, but he was crazy mad. He shoved one of the pistols in my hand and pulled back on his horse and leveled his gun. I had no choice. We both fired. He missed. And I didn't. Self-defense, yes, but uh, there were no witnesses, and uh, and I was an outsider, a Yankee. So you ran for it, is that it? I ran for it. St. Louis, Virginia City, the, the Panhandle, Abilene, Dodge. Yeah. The girl, Doc. What happened to the girl? I waited for her in St. Louis. We were married there. Two months later, she... She died of typhoid fever. I can't go back there, Matt. I've got no defense. It'd mean prison. I'd rot in prison. I won't go back, Matt. Hunter is here after two prisoners, Doc. I got no right to my own rules. Go after one man and keep the other one covered. I always figured the only kind of law that would work out here is an honest law. What are you going to do? I don't know, Doc. Virginia, if that's what you mean. 
I always figured you was a law here. Is he short in this town, Marshal? You say the word, we'll run him out. I ever ask you for help, Bucko? Well, no, but... When a man's short in Dodge, I'll run him out. No offense, Marshal. You keep your own cinch tight and don't worry about anybody else, huh? I'll see you, Bucko. I swear, Mr. Dillon, I ain't never seen nobody with such bad luck in my whole life. You ought to swear off Pharaoh and stick to stud. Who, Chester? Hey, Jethro Keener. He just lost three whole weeks' pay. And Bunko Benson, sitting right there beside him, mind you, picked up $230. So that's why he's feeling big. Let's take a walk, Chester. Swear three weeks' pay. I never seen such luck. What about Doc? Oh, he turned in a couple hours ago. That's when I come on over here. How's he acting? Oh, about as usual. One thing he is doing, though, that he ain't never done before. He's toting a gun. Evening, Marshal. Oh. Hello, Mr. Hunter. Since you didn't come to see me, Mr. Dillon, I've come to you. Wondering what progress you've made. Well, I, I'm still checking. And the results at all, Marshal? Got much to go on, you know. Calvin Moore was a doctor by profession. He might still be practicing. I suggest we investigate local doctors. Well, that wouldn't take long. We've only got one, Doc Adams. How old a man is he? Early 50s, I imagine. But he doesn't show much resemblance to that photograph he gave me. Maybe you're too used to him to notice the resemblance. Yeah, maybe. I'd like to look him over myself, Marshal. He's pretty busy. Out on calls most of the time. But not all of the time. No, not all the time, of course. All right, Mr. Hunter. I'll bring him around. Time to get killed in, Mr. Hunter. So it seems. About that doctor, Marshal, you didn't bring him around. Uh, he's out on a call. But I think I want to meet him more than ever now. You will. I'm warning you. Uncle, look! What? Yeah. Yeah, that worked pretty slick, didn't it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, thanks, Chester. 
All right, let's get him down to the jail, and you can go find Doc. We're going to need him. Hola, amigo. You want to know about stereo phonographs? Listen to my last bullfight on ordinary stereo. Olé. But now, Colombia Stereo One. Ah, there is a corrida de toros. Real life, like magnifica. There is such a big difference in stereo phonographs. With most, all you get is a couple of speakers shooting in different directions. But with Colombia, ah, hombre, you get fantastic stereo projection. What it does is to send circles of sound sweeping through every inch of a room. You are surrounded with live sound, live feeling, live passion. Ole, ole! How they cheered me. Ask your Columbia phonograph dealer to demonstrate stereo one by Columbia. Prices start as low as $39.95 for portables, $129.95 for consoles. El Picador, who let that ball out? Bunko, just one more second, and I'll have a hold of that bullet, and then uh, we'll... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, add that one to your collection, Matt. I'll make Hunter a present of it. It wasn't bad shooting to be firing in the dark at a gun flash. You never give me back to Virginia. Now, hold still, Bunko. I expect a man to tie a bandage. <clears throat> How'd you know that he'd come to my office, Matt? Didn't, Doc. We were waiting for you. Oh, I see you. There. Yeah, that ought to stop the bleeding. Don't loosen it up now, and you live to hang yet. Don't worry about my hanging, Doc. I'll outlive you. Well, in view of the circumstances, uh, I'd say odds are about even. Well, Matt, shall we adjourn to the front office? Yeah, come on. Okay, lock the cell, Chester. Yes, I will. I turned in at 10 o'clock tonight, Matt. I got one hour's sleep. They called me over to Mrs. Behan. They thought her baby was on the way. False alarm, of course. Usually is the first time. And I got back and came straight over here. Dark. You were wearing a gun earlier today. What did you do with it? I put it back in the drawer where it belonged. I realized I was acting like a fool. Was that why you were waiting in my office? Somebody tried to kill Hunter, and you thought it was me? I've tried to think of some way out of this. A way out for both of us, Doc. But I got one man under arrest back there now. I can't rightly set myself up as a judge and free the other man. I'd even hope you'd cut and run for it. You'd get away if you did, because Hunter doesn't know the country. Oh, no, no. I'm too old to run, Matt. What are you going to do? I'm a law man, Doc. Right or wrong. Well, then, uh, I guess I'm under arrest. No, I didn't say that. Uh, huh? Doc Adams, yes. right? Oh, there you are. Uh, yeah, what's the trouble? There's a fellow in the railroad yards who was asleep on the track. Drunk, I guess, and they went to switching cars. Well, you better come, Doc. He's awful bad. <laughs> He's sitting near the loading pens down this way, I guess. Guess there's some lights over there and people standing around. Marshal, is that you? Yeah. Oh, Hunter, I, I thought you went to bed hours ago. Well, I'm a light sleeper, Mr. Dillon. I heard there's an accident over in the yard. I'll just walk along with you. Give me a chance to meet your local doctor. Well, I guess you can meet him right now if you want to. Oh? Doc, this is Ed Hunter. Doc Adams. Yeah. 
How do you do, sir? Mr. Hunter? I got one of your prisoners locked up, Mr. Hunter. John Allison, known here as Bunko Benson. Good. He's the man who tried to kill you tonight. One down, then. Just one to go. Calvin Moore. Dr. Calvin Moore. Will you give Doc a chance to wear? Will you stand back, please? Please. Uh, Bad is right. I will do what we can. That man who's hurt, Marshal, who is he? I uh, drifter. He's been around Dodge a couple of years. Calls himself Texas Joe. Uh, you see not have No him. friends or family. We'll have you fixed up here in a couple of years? Nobody knows where he came from. It's the usual get story. You, Doc. That's right. I told him get you. Be all right. <laughs> You guys here? Sure, it'll be all right. It certainly has to work on the primitive conditions. Doc? Mm, yeah. Uh, Chester, will you get those lanterns going and give Doc some more light? Yes, Mr. Jump. Let's take it easy there. Yeah, he's the only real doctor this side of Abilene. Is there anything I could do to help Mr. Dillon? Mm-hmm. I guess not, Miss Kelly. Thanks, anyway. Oh, Tex. He stopped in at the restaurant not more than four hours ago, and I fixed him a meal. You never know. Well... Doc can pull him through if anybody can. Sure he can. Uh, put one of those lanterns on the other side, Chester. Okay, Doc. They seem to put a lot of faith in your Dr. Adams. They got reason to, Mr. Hunter. Yeah, Matt, could you give me a hand here? Yeah, sure. Uh, lift his head up a little bit there, will you, Matt? Yeah. Not much chance, Matt. All I can do is make him comfortable. Now, uh, don't try to talk now, Tex. You're going to be all right. You... You've been decent to me, Marshal. You treated me square. You and Doc, only friends I got. Sure, Tex. I, I got one more favor to ask. Could, could, could someone read me some scripture? Well, Tex, I, I just don't... Recall any of them. Well, I, I do, uh, Mrs. Cubby. I doubt if he can hear. Uh, I, I, I can hear. Please. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside uh, the still Cubby. waters. He restores my soul. Uh, I, I think that's enough, Mrs. Cubby. Can't win them all, I guess. No, I can't win them all. Well, I guess... Dr. Adams, there's only a physician here. I suppose you also function as coroner. That's right. And this man here, he'll be buried under the name of Texas Joe? Uh, don't worry about it. Boot Hill is full of men buried under nicknames. Oh, so In this country... Doc! Oh, Doc, I just came from... Oh. Yeah. Doc, I've been sitting up with Mrs. B and... You left too soon. She needs you over there right away. Well, then there wasn't a false alarm. Uh-uh. All right, Kitty. I'll be there as quick as I can. Well, as soon as... Well, uh... Kitty, uh, you go on back over and do what you can for her. Doc will be along. All right, Matt, but you better hurry. Well, Mr. Hunter... Well, gentlemen, this seems to have been my lucky night. Both my fugitives located within an hour of each other. Yeah. I guess there's nothing I can one do to talk One safe in you. jail and one of them dead. Or oh, didn't you notice the resemblance, Marshal? Texas Joe here? Obviously, the man in the photograph, I saw it immediately. Well, I uh, hope you'll take all necessary steps to see that he's buried under his real name, Calvin Moore. And his death, of course. Close the case. I believe in for Virginia with my other prisoner tomorrow. Lee? Mr. Hunter. Doctor, I'd say this is no time to stand around here talking. You have a patient waiting. This, uh, <laughs> this town seems to depend on you. Matt? Well, Doc, you've got work to do. Now you, you just make sure it's a boy, huh? Well, I'll... You uh, 
I'll do my darndest, Matt. I... Uh, good night, Jim. next week when CBS Radio presents another story of the western frontier. When Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke.